Hello and welcome back to the channel. You've joined myself, Dr. James Gill, for a video on clinical hygiene, if you will. So we're going to have a look at how to wash your hands appropriately. Now, when I was at medical school, I remember sitting in the lecture on how to go through hand washing and thinking, dude, I know how to wash my hands. I can go to the toilet without giving my family diarrhea. It's fine, I've got this. But I suppose that's the arrogance of youth, if you will. The difference comes when you're in the hospital, because fine, I say that I've never <laughs> caused DMV to my family after going to the toilet. That's because my family aren't immunocompromised. They're not ill, they've not got a problem. When you're in the hospital or when you're in a clinical environment, you're going to be dealing with patients that are unwell, i.e. patients that might be fighting an infection already, i.e. The, prob the probability of you causing an additional problem to them with infection things is greater. So we need to make sure we take extra care with these patients. And similarly, even in you know, the GP land, again, you're seeing patients who are potentially vulnerable, patients who are unwell, and you are also seeing patients that might have infections. So you need to make sure that you are washing your hands between patients to protect the next patient you see, but also to protect yourself. And if, again, it still sounds relatively academic until you're in the situation where you're caring for a patient on the ward and they've been very difficult to get a cannula into. You know, it's difficult to provide the patient the medications intravenously that they need. And you've had to work ages to get that cannula in. And it's hurt the patient because you've had to do so many attempts to get access. But the patient has tolerated that. They've worked with you to get that cannula in place because they know they need it and it will help them. The next day you come back and the area around that cannula has become inflamed. It's, been, it's red. There looks like there's an infection in it. And you're thinking to yourself, could I have done this? Now, the probability is that you haven't done but what we want to do with every single patient interaction is making sure that we are dotting the I's, crossing the T's, and making sure that we can say that the probability of us bringing a problem to that patient is as low as we can reasonably get it. To that end, what we want to do is wash our hands. However, I do appreciate that's not always possible and frequently in the clinical environment we'll gel our hands instead, which we'll go through it as well. But the best is going to be washing. Why? Let's say for the sake of argument, you've got some grit or dirt or muck on your hands. You know, you've grabbed a pen from your bag that has got some mud on it or jam or whatever and you can't really see it you know you, you can't feel any stickiness your hands seem to be fine there's still going to be residue on your hands alcohol gel is effective at killing bacteria and viruses pathogens and things but it's not going to move you know physical dirt and that in itself can be a problem having a good scrub with soap and water is going to do that so it's important that we always view that as, you know, the hand washing as the thing that we want to aim for, but appreciate that when that's not possible, we also have a get out of jail free card. So let's go through the steps for hand washing, and then we'll have a look at uh, gelling our hands as well. So first thing is taking off our watch, pocketing that, and then start the water running. I want to make sure that we've got enough soap to certainly cover our hands. And then we need to make sure we lather things up nicely. So to start off, I'm just going to be rubbing backwards and forwards, making sure we've got a good lather. And then I'm going to rub between the actual um, fingers themselves, getting rubbed nicely down in there. And I'm doing the back of the hands to start off with. Then I'm swapping over to go in between the fingers on the front of the hands. Hands to a cusp, and I'm rubbing my fingernails against my palms. 
I tend to turn my hands over because I find that it's uncovering both more effectively. Thumbs up, but we're not finished, so we're going to actually scrub our thumbs over one side and then on the other. We really want to focus on the fingernails, so they're going to go into the palms of the hand like so. Giving the palms a good rub and then we want to wash things off. Hospital taps. So we're closing it with the um, our elbows, and then we're going to dry off. I'll let you into a secret. Using hospital taps is about the most doctory I ever felt when I got to medical school. But why have we got these weird taps? So yes, you can turn them on with your hands, but then you can also elbow them closed. Just that way we're keeping our hands nice and clean because everybody is going to touch this with dirty hands. Yes, we're not sterilizing our hands because we're still going to be pulling out the paper to dry things with, but this is one use and bin, whereas here, as I say, everybody's going to touch that. So it's a potential source of getting our hands mucky again after we've just cleaned them. Okay, let's go find some gel. So before we go and see a patient, we need to make sure that we aren't going to be putting them at risk. So it means taking off our watches, making sure we're bare below the elbow, making sure we've not got a tie or anything like that on. And in my opinion, taking off the lanyard because we don't um, have that lanyard going through the wash very often. and We don't want a germ magnet dangling on the patient. If we can, we want to go and properly wash and uh, soap our hands. However, that's not always possible, in which case we can use the alcohol gel. So there's many types of alcohol gel that you can get, uh, but ultimately you need to make sure that if it's an alcohol gel, that it's at least 60% concentrated, 60% alcohol content, uh, and that should be sufficient for uh, clinical use. But it's not just a case of sticking it on the hands and giving it a quick rub. There are several steps that we need to go through. And we're just going to go through those now so that you understand what it is that you need to do before you actually touch a patient on the ward. Keeping in mind our job is to help the patients and it's definitely to try and minimise harm to the patient and that's the potential harm that we could be doing and cleanliness to our hands is the number one key to that. So I like two squirts, doesn't matter if it goes everywhere, um, and that should be enough to cover both hands. I'm then going to go between the fingers like so and then over the back of the hand, making sure I'm covering right in the gaps there with the fingers. I'm going to go hand, fingernails deep into the hand, but you'll notice we haven't covered the thumbs, so thumbs out, I'm going to do all the way around one, and then all the way around the other. And finally finish off with an additional scrub of the fingertips, just going round and round and round. So we want to make sure we're getting those nails as good as we can and then we're going to wait until the hands are dried. So one of the things that can happen is that you can actually end up with some residue on your hands from the alcohol gel. Now this is you know, going to be as uh, clean as we can get it with the alcohol gel but it's one of the reasons I don't like using the gel if I can. And we'll opt to use soap and water and wash my hands between each patient because I know that they're going to be that much cleaner because this alcohol gel approach will kill germs, kill bacteria and um, hopefully viruses on the hand. However, it won't do anything with regard to straightforward dirt that would be on the hand. So soap and water is always going to be the best option. But if you've not got it available, then some alcohol gel will be reasonable. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.